What's going on guys, welcome to the video. Now we're going to look at a clip from the ITV Peston show featuring Rory the Soy Boy Stewart, talking with host Robert Peston about our new Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the prospects of an early general election, and of course the Tory traitor's plans to prevent a no-deal Brexit. Let's check it out. Hey, uh, Stuart, delighted to have you with us. I think you formally resigned today, although it wasn't exactly the uh, most unexpected resignation in history. Just um, to uh, Caroline's point, who is to blame for the fact that, you know, we may well be looking at a choice between no deal and revoke in the autumn? I agree with Caroline. I mean, the reason we haven't left is that some extraordinary combination of Remainers and hardline Brexiteers blocked us getting a Brexit deal through. We would have left at the end of March. So people like me, and indeed I guess Ed, who voted three times for the Prime Minister's deal, are now facing this very strange situation where we've got people who voted consistently against it, voted against the previous Prime Minister, now saying we have to be loyal to this Prime Minister and vote for a no-deal Brexit. It's and is that, so, so as you say, Jacob Rees-Mogg, calling on all of you to stand by the new Prime Minister, how many of you are going to actually answer his Well, well, well let, let me first the answers directly Jacob's point. He said, I stood on a manifesto that said no deal was better than a bad deal. Mm. But as far as I was concerned, I had a good deal. I was passionately arguing for that deal day in, day out. It was much, much better than no deal. No deal is an unnecessary and damaging thing. There's absolutely no reason to go for it. And there are far fewer people in Parliament who want no deal than wanted the Prime Minister's deal. Right, so we hear this traitorous shit weasel blame Remainers and hardline Brexiteers for blocking the Maybot deal. When in actual fact, the Remainer MPs who blocked that deal can count that as the only good thing they have done for democracy since they got elected. It's people like Rory who pushed the surrender document through with Maybot three times. And let's never forget that her cabinet members like Philip Hammond, who has since admitted that he purposely refused to tell UK businesses to prepare for no deal. Likely because he knew if Maybot stayed in office, Brexit would never be delivered at all. The difference with the loyalty requested this time, Rory, is not so much to the Prime Minister. It's about loyalty to the Democratic vote to leave the EU. This is what Boris wants the Conservative Party MPs to support. Boris knows to ignore that Democratic vote would end the Tory party, and so must ensure the Democratic process is honoured, not only for the sake of his political career, but for the sake of democracy. Rory, though, as we know, wipes his ass with democracy. We then get on to Rory addressing what Jacob Rees-Mogg had said prior to this interview that I covered in an earlier video about the Tory MPs who campaigned and got elected on a manifesto that said no deal is better than a bad deal which Rory states he thought it was a good deal. Loads of your colleagues tell me that they are going to work night and day to stop a no-deal Brexit, even to the point of voting against Boris Johnson and this government in a vote of no confidence. Are you frightened about, of a general election or, you know, fought on the basis of Brexit? Well, I think if you're interviewing any of those people, you should raise with them the question of how they managed to stand on a manifesto that said no deal was better than a bad deal, how they managed to be part of a government that was making no deal preparations. What Was that all fantasy? Was that all something they thought was dreadful and went along with uh, for the sake of a quiet life? Or have they suddenly changed their minds because they're no longer in the cabinet? I think these are serious questions for people of that turn of mind. And you have to ask them, why did they vote for two acts of parliament which mean we leave with or without a deal now on the 31st of October? Was it just that they hoped a deal might be found? I think people have to be consistent in how they behave. Jacob, I mean, obviously, I'm going to take your advice. I've got Rory Stewart, who's resigned from the Cabinet uh, precisely on this issue because he opposes a no deal on the show tonight, and I will put that question to him. Well, Rory, that completely contradicts everything you said about MPs having to listen to Parliament. The House of Commons rejected the Maybot deal three times in overwhelming numbers. But here you sit going against that because you like the Maybot deal. How can you bitch about Boris not listening to Parliament when you are ready to ignore Parliament's rejection of the Maybot deal and continue to support it? Shut up, you hypocritical, cretinous fuck pig. Now, when I listen to Boris Johnson today, in fact, when I listen to him throughout the campaign, I find it very difficult to see how he's going to get a deal from the EU, given he's, his own red lines, such as abandoning the backstop. If it comes, if it's clear September, October, that we're looking at no deal, how will you then vote if it comes down to a confidence vote? 
I don't think it will come to a confidence vote. This is where I completely disagree with Jacob and okay. his whole analysis. The only reason that that date is the legal default is because Parliament made it the legal default. Mm -hmm. Parliament's the only law-making body in the country. Parliament can unmake well, no, it. The, the EU default. made it the legal default as well. Well, so a negotiation was held, but Parliament can again remove that date. They can either say it's a date set by a minister or they can instruct the government to seek an extension. Now, then the only way that Jacob or Mark will get a no-deal Brexit is if Europe chose to kick us out. But Parliament is the lawmaking body. It's the legal default because of Parliament, and I will work with Ed and others in Parliament to make sure that it's no longer the I mean, default. I mean, it's, it's quite clear that Boris Johnson has appointed Jacob Rees-Mogg in, you know, the very influential position of leader of the House, as it were, to try and prevent you getting any, any such vote. But you don't think Jacob can stop you no. getting a vote to delay Brexit? Well, that's, that's why the vote last week was very important, which is that the real way that they were hoping to prevent Parliament is by proroguing or suspending Parliament. Which is We've now, now got around that, right? They can't prorogue or suspend Parliament. Parliament will sit, and if Parliament will sit, we can prevent a no-deal Brexit. Now, what is your own view of this unprecedented, certainly in modern times, remaking of the government? Two-thirds of the Cabinet either kicked out or kicked out before they were, or rather resigned before they were kicked out. Can you see any logic to how Boris Johnson has conducted himself if his aim is to bring the party back together again? No, I think there's a huge logic. The logic is to make sure that the people in the Cabinet are people who are signed up to no deal by the 31st of October if he can't get a deal. And he's done that. And he's also taken out... But you don't believe that target is remotely realistic, though? No, no, but that's why I wouldn't serve in his Cabinet and that's why David Gork and Philip Hammond and David Liddington and I resigned. But and you that, will all work together to frustrate him? Well, we'll all work together to do what we believe is in the best interests of our party and our country. We feel that a no-deal Brexit would be deeply unnecessary and damaging. And I also think it's deeply divisive. The way to bring this country together was to get a moderate, pragmatic Brexit deal through that worked for our economy, that worked for the sheep farmers in my constituency, worked for the motor industry, not try to go for something which is not the will of the majority of the people. Thanks, Anushka. So, Roy, delighted you're still with, uh, with me. Just on that arithmetic, um, how much of a gamble has, you know, Boris Johnson taken in alienating so many of, you know, your colleagues by the brutality of the reshuffle? I imagine that he will feel that people will vote on their conviction on Brexit rather than on the reshuffle. So, People such as myself, or as you mentioned, David Gork or David Liddington, are people who voted consistently for a Brexit deal but are against the no-deal Brexit. I wouldn't imagine that Penny Morden, however justifiably angry she might feel, she was a great defence secretary, but I don't think that's likely to change her views on Brexit. So Rory goes on about how he is going to stop a no-deal Brexit, even though he lacks the time to do anything about it, given they are on holiday until September. And as the host points out, Jacob Rees-Mogg will stop any attempts these MPs make to prevent a no-deal Brexit. But did you notice, when Rory said about the legal default, he said about instructing the Prime Minister. The wonderful thing about instructing the Prime Minister is, he does not have to pay attention to it, unless it's a law, which it's not obviously, and will struggle to get through with Moggy as leader of the House of Commons as I've already said. He also states they can't prorogue Parliament, which we all know is not true, as they still can prorogue Parliament, but it just means Parliament would be open for something like five days to discuss Northern Ireland business. That's what their vote was on last week. Now Peston goes back to his bullshit narrative surrounding the Boris Johnson sackings when he made his cabinet, which even Rory defends Boris, proving this host is an idiot. He knows it's normal procedure. Even Rory the soy boy Stewart has to admit that before spouting the usual project fear bullshit we always see in his interviews about how catastrophic a no-deal Brexit is going to be. On that, though, I, I put to Jacob, you know, was he frightened of having a general election with, uh, you know, Boris Johnson leading the party on a no-deal Brexit platform? How high, how high do you think the risk is? I know you say you yourself are not going to be trying to force a general election, but how high is the risk of a general election? I mean, on those numbers, I mean, Jacob said you haven't got a majority, therefore the risk of a general election is indeed high. Yes, and I think, I mean, there was a really interesting question about whether Boris himself is going to want to go for an election. Mm. He may think that if he feels that he can't get a no deal through Parliament and that he can't get a new deal, right. and here I agree with Mark, I don't think he's going to get a new deal out of Brussels. 
So he may think that he doesn't want us to wait till 31st of October when all of that will be apparent and try to go for an election but if, he, if But if he does do that, and I have to say, I think that is the logic of his position, would you feel comfortable campaigning alongside him as a Tory MP? Because the, because the main thrust of what he'll be asking for in that general election is a mandate for a no-deal Brexit. I'm very proud to be a Conservative, and I'm very proud of the priorities he's got. I think mm. adult social care is something I'd love to sure. throw myself into changing. But I wouldn't stand on a no-deal Brexit coupon election. I wouldn't. So what would you do? Would you just that, at that point you would just you 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 I'd take you it, take time out of politics from it? I'd make it absolutely clear that uh, if I was standing as a Conservative, I was not in favour of no-deal Brexit. And if he asked said that everybody had to stand for a no-deal Brexit, then of course somebody like me couldn't stand. So the final clip is about the chances of an election and how risky it is for Boris and the Conservative Party to campaign on the No Deal Brexit policy. Which we all know it's not that risky at the end of the day. People want Brexit done. No deal is better than a bad deal and no deal is better than the limbo these Ramonas have done their best to keep us in. Rory states we won't get a deal out of Brussels and I don't think we will either. It's not impossible to get one but it's not likely. I'm sure Boris knows this as well which is why he's going for no deal and then see what the EU do closer to the time. I think Boris is trying to call their bluff. Peston finishes asking if Rory the soy boy Stuart would run again as an MP with Boris going for a no deal Brexit, should an election be called. Rory talks a lot of shit but states he would not stand. Well, no shit Sherlock. The Conservative Party would not let you stand if it was campaigning on a no deal Brexit manifesto. They would have to drain the swamp of you treacherous fuck pigs. So I'm going to end the video there guys, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Remember to like, subscribe and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I will see you all in the next one.